Hello everyone, i80386SX. Today, we're going to talk about getting your retro PC, or really any PC for that matter, onto a public Wi-Fi. Now my particular tutorial is going to focus on the retro side of things, but this travel router actually has multiple purposes. It's actually got four purposes to be exact, maybe a little bit more than what the box says. We got, we can actually use this thing as a router or an access point. You got hotspot mode, which is basically like a Verizon or AT&T or in my case, a Cellcom hotspot. Yeah, Cellcom being a local mom and pop cell carrier around here. And we got uh, client mode, which allows you to basically turn something like an Xbox or a PlayStation, go from wired to wireless. So think of a reverse router, so to speak. And of course, then the thing can be a range extender. For our tutorial, we're going to go hotspot mode. And here's the device itself. A little bitty hockey puck thing. It is actually half the size of a hotspot. You don't need any wired connection to configure the thing, but it is suggested. And this thing to the right of us is a power brick. I'll show you why that's in place right now. The thing is a glorified... See? We're powered on. This is a, from Walmart Special. It's a 8,000 milliamp, 899. Probably can get them even cheaper than that on Amazon. So couple of things to consider here with this. Uh, you could bring this to any hotel, even one that has one of those license agreement terms and conditions pages on them, or cap the portal if you want to be technical. You could bring it even to one of them, and you can use your devices, connect through this, and then this will connect through the whatever Wi-Fi you're connected to. Now, if let's say that the business you're at already has open Wi-Fi with none of that uh, Captain Portal stuff on us. You really don't need it unless you want to have something central, I guess. Or you want to secure things just a little bit more because probably not a bad idea regardless to have one of these, especially if you travel a lot because uh, they may secure things up a little and the Wi-Fi the place is providing basically turns into your WAN. Also the same deal with if you turn this thing into a hot spot. That's exactly what we're going to do. So, in, in a sense, we're trying to mix saltwater fish and freshwater fish. We're trying to basically put them in the same tank with uh, what we're going to do today because we're using retro equipment. There is a limitation that I found on the first recording of this. This is one of the few limitations that I'm going to discuss. Is that when you turn in hot spot mode on this thing, it disables web security. You have WPA2 or open. That's it. Nothing in between. Another thing to tell you right now, if the establishment's Wi-Fi, if they block VPN or certain applications or games, this device is not going to help you in any capacity. So there's, there's that. So if you're trying to torrent off of this, this is not going to work and if you dare torrent at a business, please do it legally. Don't download any illegal movies. Even if it's a crummy business, you don't want somebody doing that to you. So that's my jerk. That's my little uh, gist of the day here. So let's configure this thing quick. I strongly suggest having a wired PC because that'll make things way easier. And the concerto in the background is actually not going to be used in any capacity for this video. It is there just to run the battery down as I am testing it right now. That video will be up eventually. So let's get a computer up real quick. Gotta find an Ethernet cable and connect accordingly.
Uh-oh. can't remember my password. There we go. And pardon my reach here. Plug into the device. Be plugged in. Now you want to open up a web browser. I'm shocked that that went to a solid green. Uh, regardless, so the default IP address is 192.168.0.1. And this is very interesting because it's not even allowing me to connect to this. Maybe we'll try a private window once and see where that takes us. This is weird. I wonder. Oh, it's connecting. That's special. Well, you know what? Screw it. We will uh, connect this uh, wireless. It's going to be a little bit of a pill, but... And, oh, it's not even detecting a wireless network now. That's special. And we'll try the trailer trash USB wireless. There we go. Now we got... So, you got to type in a password, which is on the bottom of the device. It also comes with a card. Now, there is a wireless AC version of this. That's ten dollars more on Amazon. I did not use that because, well, there's no five gigahertz band for the card I'm using, so it doesn't mean no good. There we go. And this is we put in a password. And operation mode will go here, and we're going to change this to a Wisp. That's your hotspot. So off to the restart category here. This will take a little bit to reboot. I think this all of a sudden after it reboots that progress bar, it'll take a little bit and it'll go by like it is now, then all of a sudden it'll just zoom right to 100 and on to the next step. Yep, that's exactly what it did. So, next thing you want to do, and I want to show you my point here. Here you want to put in the SSID that you want to bridge. So whatever the name of the wireless network that you're trying to connect to at that business, that's what you put here. I'm also going to change this down to wireless BG because my card only does actually B, but... Uh, well, I can't. Well, we'll do that when we're at the place of business that we're going to try and do this with. But I do want to show you... Is this gonna make a liar out of me? Nope. There's only two options. Uh, it's hard to tell, but these bottom two are grayed out, unfortunately, and I wish they weren't. I know WEP is not very good, but that's the best the cards of the retro PC world can do. And it's like having a lock on your screen door. It'll keep the honest people out. If somebody really wants to get in, well, they'll just try to break that screen door open. So here, we are going to do the disable security. And this is the unfortunate part, the pain in the rear part of this, because you have to uh, connect back. 
Oh, hold on here. We got a problem. It says error unknown. Let's turn the Wi-Fi back on. And it did go to an open network. There's my advanced censoring technique right there. So now we have an open wireless network featuring this thing. If you want to do things a little bit more, if you want to secure things a little, you enable this MAC address filtering, which is right here. And you can allow workstations accordingly, and you could do that. I'm not going to do that for when I go to wherever that has the Wi-Fi we're connecting to, but that's pretty much it for the part we could do here. So I am going to leave it at that. We're going to go to a place with public Wi-Fi now, and we're going to we're going to connect our retro PC to some modern day Wi-Fi. You still do need a modern device, so I am going to bring another phone with me to connect to whatever Wi-Fi network we ultimately decide to do, because there's still that license and terms page that we got to worry about, and of course, inputting it into the TP link is going to be a big deal, so that's what we're going to do, but that's all we got for now. Oh, a little bit of unfortunate news. I forgot the power brick, but the good news is this thing is like a cell phone, and the LTE is starting to come up already. But get back to what I said. This thing's basically a cell phone, so I plugged it into my car's uh, cigarette adapter. So now... We must connect. First thing is first, we need to find a network. And we have Arby's Guest. We're going to connect. And it should bring up a license and terms page, which it does. I just wanted to make sure that worked. That isn't really going to help us in this particular junction. So now we got to go back to the TP link and basically do the same. You just got to remember Arby's guest, and it is case sensitive, so do bear in mind on that. So let's go to a web browser. All right, so what do do? And it's asking for the password, so we'll do that. And I know that you're probably seeing more of my phone than you probably want to, but here we are. Go down to wireless now, and we're going to put in Arby's Guest or whatever the name of the network you are trying to connect to. It's safe. There's an automatic scan feature that would work as well. We are still not happy. Don't know what happened there. It's still thinking here. So let's uh, try that again. That was a little bit weird. It should be a solid green light at this point. Maybe it's rebooting. Yep, that's what it was. It was rebooting and then I got kicked off to Arby's Guest. So we'll reconnect to the TP link. And now that we did that, now that we're properly configured, we accept the license terms, we get the RVs again because it's going through the TP link, and we are now connected. So now that brings us to the Feast Resistance. Let's get the Windows 95 client to see if we can connect it. Now this is my second video, so it may already be associated, and sure enough, it certainly appears to be that way. go. First thing is first, let's do a ping command. Those never lie. I know there's some network engineers that think, oh, that's not a good test. For this, it's good enough. It's not a, a one-all solution, though. And now, they're kind of high, but got two. Got two. Yep. Well, that is an IP address, so that counts. 
Let's go to a web browser and let's try to go to something. I know. I'm sorry. Man, that website's not going to be available. We're going to go to... Oh, I did visit that already. So, oldnet.com. We're going to go to compact.com, as I know I never did that on this particular machine. And the lights are flickering in the damn car, so I hope it isn't done. Well, it's supposed to be going. This is a 486-based laptop, so it may run a little bit slower than what we need here. It's just the way it goes, and it is going to send it. That's a good sign. And once it loads a picture, I think we'll be kosher here. There it is. So that is it. We are on an Arby's Wi-Fi, although albeit in my car, social distancing and whatnot. You got a solid green light on this thing. If you really wanted to, like I did discuss earlier, you could easily do some MAC address filtering to try and, and secure things a little. Definitely not a foolproof solution, but it is better than nothing. So that's pretty much going to be it. I have another video that's coming out that it compares to using a Linux-based computer to do the, basically the same thing. But I think this is personally my favorite of the two solutions right here is going to be this little TP link because it, it is very versatile. And if you have, nope, I guess I can put that on. This thing is very versatile. I mean, it can be used in all sorts of situations. And oh, you need to get Wi Fi in this little corner. Hell, here you go. We'll just put this thing off USB power, and boom, here you go. You got Wi Fi. And I'm also not sure how long it's going to, if you have one of those uh, power bricks on it, the, the, like I had earlier, I don't know how long it's going to last if you use it in a real world situation. On a computer like this, it's probably gonna be fine as you get, this is a brand new built battery, built battery, you get two, between two and three hours with it. So I imagine you'd be fine with that. So that's pretty much gonna be it. Like I said, I will do a follow up between the two solutions and if I find any notes on it, you'll definitely hear it in that video. If you have any questions, uh, comments, uh, concerns, or even constructive criticism beyond clean my car, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments section. And as always, thank you for watching.